found Milton Casales and the, the Playhouse at a time when I was looking for some change uh, in the way I approached acting and the way I just my, I was in my life. And it so happened that I hit somebody, uh, my agent had recommended him, and I just came along to the Playhouse and in one minute I knew I had found the right person. Um, I had always had a slight problem with emotion as an actor and expressing emotion and somebody, Milton said, almost as soon as I'd sat down, he said the thing about actors is they try to cry but people try not to and in that instant I just, I, my jaw dropped to the floor and I actually went, <coughs> I gasped. Um, I knew I was in the right place. Milton's way of teaching is about embracing change. It's about not being afraid of change, not only not being afraid of change, but actually openly looking for change in your life and in the way you act and in the way you approach material. And it's extremely refreshing and it's extremely... Um, it unlocks all the doors. All those things that you, you hold on to, all the stuff that you um, you do because you're scared of moving through the doors. Uh, he lets you let it go. He encourages, not only encourages you to let it go, he helps you to. And it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process that never stops. The reason I keep coming back to the Playhouse is because uh, it's, it, once you've tapped into it, um, you just want more. And I've seen people in the, in the time that I've come, and I come as a visitor backwards and forwards. When I was here for a long time, I did a series here, I was able to come every week. Uh, since I've gone back to England, whenever I come to, to, uh, to LA, I try and make it work around the weekend so that I can come to the Playhouse as often as I can. The book I found incredible when I when I first came here, it was you. It was suggested that one should read it. Uh, it's like a necessary grounding so that you know where Milton's coming from. Uh, every now and again, I refer to it um, just because it's um, it's just a way of hearing Milton's voice uh, when I'm not here. Um, I also, when I'm here, um, I make as many notes as I possibly can um, because it's one of those things, not that I, I sort of look at the notes every week, but it's very interesting when I just go back over notes and just read them arbitrarily. Um, most often something is pertinent to what I'm doing at the moment. Um, and I think one of the reasons the process is so fascinating to me as an English actor is because we don't have anything like this in England. Principally, and as I've talked to people about this and said, you know, why the hell do we not do actors in England think once they've been to drama school or once they've, they've, they've had some part of the, you know, the learning process, why do they think it's over? Why do they think it's not something that is constantly developing and, and moving? And one of the reasons I would say is because there is nowhere like the Playhouse and there is no one like Milton Gonzalez. First or second time I sat down in front of him, I'd done something. And uh, he gave me a huge release. Uh, because he said, he said, all your life you've, you've known that you had a talent. And I did the English thing of going, well, you know, he said, no, you knew when you were a kid, you knew amongst your peers you had something different. And I said, well, actually, yes, you're right. And he said, there is someone in your life who has always undermined that. And I went, it was real news to me. He said, think about it for a while. And when you've worked out who it is, you have to tell them to stop. And uh, it was a, a huge surprise to me. I couldn't think that for the life of me, I thought maybe it was brother, maybe it was my partner, although my partner has always been, she's, she's extremely supportive as well, you know, so, I thought maybe, 
Maybe it's my father. Well, maybe it wouldn't. I thought about it. And the next day, Miss Alias, you know, as, as things happen, when they're meant to happen, my parents called me and I was talking to my mum about the class and telling her about everything that Melton had said to me. I was going to what an extraordinary voyage of discovery it was being. And she said, oh yes, yes, yes. And I talked to my dad and I thought, well, I can't talk to him about that. So I thought I'd talk to him about the new job I'd got, which at the time was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I said, it's this great series, it's beautifully written, it's extraordinarily thrilling, you can't wait to turn the page. And at the same time, it's brilliantly written comedy. And he said, without a second thought, well, it's the problem with comedies, and all your best bits will end up on the cutting room floor. And I thought, bless him. He's, it, it, that's him. That, yeah, that's, that's exactly what Milton was talking about. And I asked to talk to Mum again. I said, Dad, today it's him. He's doing it now. And she said without a second thought, well, he's shielding you from disappointment. Which is a, something I think a lot of parents do, misguidedly, mistakenly think that they can step in and stop their children from being disappointed in life. You can't. Your children will learn what they need to learn. And part, all you can do with your children is to support them and to guide them and to show them where they can go, to give them choices. Not to close the door and say, well, you know, I wouldn't go there if I were you. And I did what Melton said, and we said about a long period of, of, of redressing the balance. And, uh, you know, my dad fought it and said, you know, you, you have children, you'll understand, you'll know. And uh, now we get, we always got on fine, but now he understands. And uh, he, he, he doesn't go there. Because it, it doesn't, all it does is actually the person who's doing it becomes the disappointment themselves. It doesn't help anybody, it doesn't move things on. Um, and it was a great, it was a fascinating voyage of discovery for both me and my father. Um, and I th thank Milton for it. Great. Yeah. For Good. these new young yeah. actors and why... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why absolutely. Um, I brought my daughters today to class because I, I asked Milton if he would mind. Um, because we've talked about drama schools in England. Um, my eldest daughter went to a, um, a, a college which encourages acting and music. Um, but when it came to sort of, she, they, all her teachers were expecting her to go straight to drama school and she balked at that. She kind of thought, I don't, she didn't want to go necessarily into that mainstream um, regimented way of teaching. Um, especially since a lot of what I've been able to pass on to them is from what I've gleaned from Milton. And the youngest one is now um, in doing exams and will be thinking about drama school and I would like them and they would like very much to come to the Playhouse. Um, because for me it's, it enables um, young actors, it, as I say, it opens doors, it doesn't shut them off from anything, it actually gives them choices and it, um, it's a it's a creative way of exploring acting. I never cease to be amazed when I see a class. There is always something which for me is groundbreaking, whether it's something in the way I see an actor developing. Uh, I've watched several actors over the years just blossoming. Um, or whether it's something that Milton says that just hits the nail on the head, or it's something that, you know, when, when he throws something out to the class that somebody responds with. There is always a moment when I'm, when I'm um, inspired, and I'd like to pass that on to my kids.